The higher energy run is, was foreseen sometime before Christmas, as the accelerator people have told us and as the director have told us. So from our point of view, we were ready for the high energy run at any moment. Um, and uh, the plan for the night, we started in the log. If you look at the log, we started with uh, having some problems um, uh, with uh, some uh, trips, with some problems. So the plan for the night did not say that at 3.30 we will give you high energy collisions. Um, so uh, we, at some point uh, after 10.45, they ramped one beam and they lost the other. One beam went to 1.18 TV. The other beam was lost. This is when I came in and we had the, the shift change. And, um, and at that point, it was 11.30 when we called for the plan um, uh, and they asked that, uh, they told us, they informed us that they will play again. When they will, they will inject they will ramp to go to high energies, and then they will play. That means making their measurements for the high intensity and high energy runs. And, uh, and we have to be on safe during that time. So this is how the night started, okay? Um, now, what happened is that uh, at 1.22, we went, um, we went to, uh, to we were, we went to LHC clocks internally in the experiments, and we, uh, the LHC told us that they, would, they, that they were injecting and they were going to ramp. So uh, that, was, uh, that was fill 916. They gave us their filling scheme. That means they gave us which bucket they are going to put BIM for both BIM 1 and both BIM 2. And we verified we were taking data because while they are playing, we can take data on a safe mode and we can verify with what we see if what they say is what we see, which we did. Um, so um, at that point, um, so that was then, <clears throat> um, they finished the injection at, uh, at uh, 2.26 um, and uh, we continued monitoring after the injection what was going on. And then uh, at 2.26 they started ramping and they ramped very fast. So within approximately 10 minutes they went to 6.41 GV per beam and then they went to 9.31 as I was looking with, together with with the, with the boss here, with the Ramfield manager, Andres. We were looking, very, they were ramping very fast. Um, at that point, we had to make a decision for one of our subsystems because we felt that we should put them on the, on the run, given that the, the LHC was going very fast, and we called in order to not lose time when we bring up the voltages. So we did that, and at 2.45, so between 2.26 of the last handshake with the, with the LHC and 2.45, we, um, we got uh, 2.36 TV collisions. And uh, at that point, we were all in the room, we, we, we were all very excited. Excited is, uh, is, is, the words are difficult to say, you have to be here. We were looking at the monitors, we were looking that we were ready. Everybody, we went to the detectors uh, to the detector shifters and we had everybody be alert and we realized at that point that we had a very good chance to get the high energy data and that would be the highest energy data ever recorded hadron in hadron, in hadron Collider. So um, some of us have seen high energy data at the Tevodron for 13 years but we haven't seen higher than the Tevodron so that was very good. <laughs> that was a very good moment when we were breaking the record. We called uh, the offline people uh, and the people who are doing the, the prompt analysis to have them all ready. And we called the spokesperson. We woke him up and we told him that we are having collisions and in pretty, pretty soon we have to make a decision to bring the full detector up, including the sensitive uh, detectors, the pixels and the tracker, that they require very clean conditions before we put them in the round. 
The people from the tracker were all here. They were looking at the beam all the time. They were looking that the beam was clean. They were um, very eager to move fast and bring the, the detectors in, but very, very careful. We called the control room. We called the CCC a few times to ask them for the plan because we were seeing that the beam was clean. They told us they are playing and they need some measurements. So we had, um, we had all the detectors except for the pixel and the tracker um, in, and we were, we were uh, recording uh, 2.36 collision data, and we were looking at the event displays, and we were monitoring all the rates. Before 3.36, Jim came in, and we called again the controls, the, the, the CCC. We, they told us that they would have 30 more, more minutes of adjustments, and then they would go to quiet beams, and that's what and what's, that's what they did. The time was getting close that we have to put the other two detectors. We stopped the run, and uh, we had uh, the, the tracker experts on the job to bring up the, the tracker. Um, there was, it was very intense. Um, it took a little time to bring the tracker. We had to be very careful so that we don't lose that we don't, as we say, we don't incur dead time because then we are, they are giving us um, they are giving us data and we're not taking it. So we were very careful not this not to happen. And um, at 4:11 in the morning, the tracker was 100% up. The pixels were in. Uh, that was run 120 with everybody in at 2.36 TV and. Uh, the the room was uh, the room was filled. The, the 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 windows were exploding here. It was very cold outside, but in here it was really 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 hot. And uh, um, we were trying to keep calm and not, in order not to make a mistake. And uh, and we were monitoring everything very carefully. Uh, Jim was uh, uh, was here, and uh, and uh, we were calling a number of people uh, so that uh, we can be ready uh, to show whatever we could from the first highest energy collision data in the next morning. Um, we were making sure that all our numbers are making sense, whatever numbers we were checking, and they were, and. Uh, by uh, 4:20, we continued. Uh, by 4:20, we continued taking data. Um, we uh, got a phone call from the CCC. They, they had promised us that we are going to take data until six, and they called us at 5:15 to tell us to make a deal that they stop at 5:30 because they had to do some more high-intensity studies, and uh, we made a deal to do it until 5:45, so that we get a little more data. Um, and they did that, they published that, and they gave us data at, until 5.51. So, um, so uh, after we did that, we were looking at the events, we were having people analyzing the events all around. Uh, there were people at Fermilab, there were people on the phone. Uh, we were trying to run some schemes and uh, uh, the, the run field manager was calling to inform everybody on what the conditions were here. Jim brought the champagne. We printed out a few of the events, and uh, we stayed here. Um, we stayed here to go through more numbers and more results from the high energy run um, through the morning. Then, in the, in the, as the shift was exchanging at seven, we were having more people, and everybody was clued in what happened in the night. Um, and that's what it was. That's how the night went.